Hey guys, today we get to talk about interesting scenario that just happened was Wizards of the Coast is now paying very big YouTubers. Uh, this uh, YouTuber has a 2.4 million subscriber count on YouTube and she does cosplay. She is a professional cosplayer. Huge fan base. And Wizard of Coast was able to talk to her and do a sponsored video where she transfer transforms into Vraska for the newest set, Guilds of Ravnica. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. You can either go organic growth, which is Christine Sprankle, somebody who is interested in the community, or you can hire someone made mad i w luck who already has a huge base uh subscriber base and then have her do something that she normally wouldn't do a lot of the comments are that she should include a picture of the character so people know who she is trying to become a lot of people in the comments have no idea who vraska is or what magic the gathering is but this is it helps reach another audience. And here we can see a change in philosophy. It was not cheap to hire this person. It was very expensive to hire her. And historically, cosplay, Wizard of the Coast has not paid for cosplay. Wizard of the Coast has not paid Christine Sprankles for her work. And it is actually, I would argue that Christine Sprankle spent more time and more resources than when you hire someone to make a YouTube video from home. Uh, they have control over the lighting. When you have to go to a GP and you're not paid to go to a GP, and you have to bring your costume, you have to interact with fans. I would say that is actually a lot tougher than making a YouTube video from home. Now this YouTube video is very good. I mean, it is a 13, it's almost 14 minutes and you can clearly tell that she is like a makeup expert. She's done uh, quite well for herself on YouTube. So it's fascinating, right? It's, fa it's almost like a 180 from where we were a, a few years ago where cosplay was being neglected, it was being supported, but not by Wizards of the Coast. And I would have never imagined that Wizards of the Coast would pay money, very good money, for someone to make a video. But that's where we are. Wizards of the Coast has recently cut back on GPs in Asia and South America to save money. I'm positive they're not making that much money from those two regions in terms of GP tournaments. And that's why they cut, I mean, if they were making hand over fist money, they would continue, right? But they're cutting back on GPs and they're promoting, they're paying more money for this type of sponsorship uh, where you hire a person who is a Hearthstone player, maybe formerly a Magic player, you entice them. Uh, in this case, we have a known cosplayer who doesn't play Magic who doesn't know very much about magic and her fan base has no idea what this is. Uh, you pay her uh, and then she's able to promote this character to her 2.4 million subscribers, which is way larger than any YouTuber. It's 10 times larger than Tolarian, I believe, or very close. Uh, I don't think any magic YouTuber will ever hit over a million subscribers based on, no, just based on what it is. And you also see sponsorships with um, a lot of um, larger YouTube channels, uh, Day9 and Felisa. They used to actually be create sponsored YouTube content. So you have two choices. You have one choice to go with commercialization. And the second choice is to go with a, a organic growth. They are choosing commercialization. And that I believe is the correct path. They're choosing Amazon versus local game store. They're choosing this person over Christine Sprankles. They're choosing a Hearthstone player, right? So the showcase where you get to open beta and alpha and all this cool stuff and you get money for just showing up. You 
have out of the uh, eight players, three of them are Hearthstone players. That is not by mistake. And I thought it was kind of strange for them to do that. But given that the corporate policy has probably changed a ton to promote MTG Arena, um, it's so mystical. It fits you. I have little idea what she is, but this is amazing. Your contacts are cool, by the way, because I don't play Magic the Gathering. Slight suggestion, please add an image of, for the, of the character for the people who don't know who you are painting. Hi Lex, I enjoy you're getting more into cosplay. This is so sick. So you can see it's all females and that is the demographic. So it is not surprising when I say that, that the, the demographic, the ideal demographic for Magic the Gathering is females. And that's why you pay this person to make this video because 90, unlike any magic channel where 95% of the audience is male, her audience is probably closer to 80% female or 20% male. There is a big push to bring females into Magic the Gathering, which I think is great. But you also see a, you see a trend where Unsleeved Media is persona non grata because he is not, uh, he is the, he's preventing this trend from happening where you would encourage more females to play magic. Under Wizard of the Coast, they made up numbers, I believe. They were saying that 40, 45% of all magic players, at one time they were saying this, were female. Now, that sounds pretty crazy to me. It's, there's no way for me to verify that number, but that sounds very high given the information I know where 98% of YouTube magic viewers are male. And that's true for every channel. That's true for every channel. It's at least a 90-10 split. 90% male. So Christine has basically uh, left the game and she's created this vacuum and the vacuum can either be filled by organic or it can be filled by paid. And that's the only two traffics that exist online. It's either organic or paid. So if you do marketing, you know what I mean. They decided to go with paid. Uh, they decided to hire people to promote magic to core audiences that may not be interested in magic. Hearthstone, for instance, they're always hiring people who are large Hearthstone players because supposedly these Hearthstone players will make the transition from Hearthstone to Magic. I don't have information on how likely that is, but in my opinion, it is not all that like. It's not going to happen. Uh, now, Magic female. Females in Magic has always been a very hot topic for Wizards of the Coast. So Christine Sprinkles, she was the go-to person, uh, all organic. Wizard of the Coast did not pay her. They should have paid her. And even, I mean, imagine going for a weekend, not having that much fun because you ha have to interact with slightly creepy males, if not all the time creepy males. And now you're in costume, you're taking pictures, um, you're, not, you're not being paid for your likeness. Wizard of the Coast is promoting... Uh, pictures of you for GP Vegas. You already picture for GP Vegas and Avison. A lot of this crazy stuff that Wizard Coast took advantage of this per poor uh, female. When I mean poor, I mean like it's sad that this happened. And now Wizard Coast is commercializing it. Uh, the you don't. This person who has 2.4 million subscribers, she knows what she's doing. She has a contract in place. She has money that's been paid to her ahead of time. And that's the evolution of magic. Uh, magic is losing its organic growth and it's going for 100% paid. That's why you have all these gimmicks. You have the uh, mythic, uh, the mythic planeswalker full art gimmick, right? To sell more packs. I mean, if the packs did, well, were not there, I think it would have been a better look, but it just, just looks like they're trying to sell more packs. So this is mad eye look. 
two point, sorry, 2.6 million subscribers. This video is a paid promotion by Wizard Coast for the release of their newest card set, Guilds of Ravnica, available October 5th. You can find the link below. Thank you so much. Very professional. Uh, she even has her own clothing line. So yeah, that's the future of magic is cookie cutter and you have to be you have to follow certain policies for people to sponsor you. Anyway, I'll make a point. So Rudy, in for instance, is not going to be sponsored. But a commercialized Disney version Rudy would be. And that person wouldn't have any interest in magic. They would just be paid to talk about magic as best they can. Anyway, bye guys.